Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 18th episode of my Rails of Industry Minecraft series. In today's episode, I hope to set up a mob spawning area. I'm not sure if I will get that far, but let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I actually need to make some form of mob spawning, and I'm going to use the mod Ender.io because it is a relatively easy way to spawn mobs, at least uh, relatively speaking. Uh, all you need is some energy and some infrastructure, and you can spawn mobs. So let's get started with that, and uh, what I need to grab is a powered spawner, and I'm going to have to make several things before I can actually make a powered spawner, but that's okay. So to make a powered spawner, the recipe is like this. I have none of this except for the heads, uh, so let's kind of trace backwards and see what I can do. So first off, I do need these simple machine chassis. I can make those, so let's grab some of these. Uh, I will need several of them, so let's just go ahead and grab 10. Uh, they are pretty cheap, so that's not a problem. And then let's see what else I will need. I will need this Sola Tunes dye blend, and for that I'm going to need some organic brown dye, some uh, crushed quartz, that's another problem, and some organic black dye. So I don't believe the dye should be too much of a problem, except for the fact I do need an alloy smelter. Uh, I can't really make an alloy smelter right now because, uh, let's actually, let's see if I can or not. Uh, the crushed lapis is not a problem. I can't make the black dye until I have a simple alloy smelter. So I'm going to have to do that. Actually, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Because I thought I saw an induction smelter recipe for that. Okay, so maybe not. Um, where was I? Okay, so... Oh, the induction smelter recipe is th for this. Okay, so I do need the alloy smelter, the basic alloy smelter. So let's get the simple alloy smelter. Um, I'm not sure what the recipe for is for that. Okay, so it is pretty simple. Stone gear... Um, yeah, that's pretty simple. Let's grab a couple of these if I can. Let's actually grab the right thing. And Okay, so that's pretty basic, to be honest. I should be able to make one or two of these real fast, and that's fantastic, because I need these to make uh, some stuff. So let's go ahead and grab one for right now. I will replace the simple alloy smelter in the future with a better one. But for right now, this will get us started. So let's grab some flux duct because this does need some energy as well. And I think I need the regular redstone flux duct. I'm not 100% sure here. Uh, because I'm not sure what I have under here. So let's see. Uh, let's flip that back off. And you know what? Because this is a temporary machine, let's just set up up in a temporary location right here will be fine so what I need to do is I need to make a few of the organic dyes um, so let's go back to the powered spawner here I need organic black dye and organic green dye I think so oh, brown and black my bad so uh, for the brown dye I need uh, I can't do any of these recipes but uh, there should be one somewhere some of this, yes, this should be, actually, there's a coal one. Okay, so brown dye, egg, and coal. So, um, I think I can use this. Some of this pulverized coal and then eggs. And I should have just, you know what, let's use just one for right now. I think that'll cook up and make me an organic brown. Actually, I need four of these, don't I? Shoot. Okay, so that recipe won't work because I don't have any more eggs. Let's look at the other, the black dye recipe. So that's uh, organic black dye. Okay, so this was the easy recipe. So it's just uh, coal dust with, with uh, I can do slime. I do have plenty of the blue slime because there's a slime island near me, so that's how I have plenty of this blue slime. And then some of the coal. And I know th I know the recipe is, I already have it, it's three to one, but I forget which is three parts and which is the one parts. Okay, so it's, okay, it's six to one, my bad. I think it was the, 
It was a different recipe that had a 3 to 1 ratio. But anyways, let's make some of this black dye real fast. I don't need very much of it, so let's make 6 of it and then call that good. And then I can look at the brown dye. I'm sure there's a way I can make more of that. So we have the black dye. And it is organic brown dye. Um, okay, so I can use coal here. So just the brown... Okay, 2, 1, 2 is my ratio, so. 2, 1, 2, I think. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's do 15 here. And then 30 here. I think this will be the ra the golden ratio here. And that looks good. Okay, so that should be um, good for that. So let's separate what we actually need here. Actually, I can just throw it all in the ME system because I will be crafting it with the ME system. So let's, now that I have enough of the brown dye to make one of these guys, let's do this. So uh, the powered spawner, let's go back to that. Okay, so yeah, this makes more than I'm going to need. Oh, hang on. Soul powder. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so I should be able to make this. I need soul sand and gold. That shouldn't be a problem. Do I have... I don't have any solarium, but I can make it real fast. It's just soul sand and gold in indu induction smelter or an alloy uh, smelter. So let's do half here and then half here so that it's just a little bit faster. Okay, it is awfully slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait on this to get me some solarium. And actually, I might even uh, pulverize it or make it into the soul powder as well. Uh, let's look at the recipe for that. The soul powder. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pulverize these uh, solarium ingots once I get them. And once I have some soul powder, I will be right back. So I've got some soul powder, and let's go ahead and put that in the recipe. And we can actually make six of these dye blends, which is actually pretty fantastic. Because it is a little bit expensive to make. And I might be uh, doing more with this in the future. But that is part of the powered spawner right there, so that's good. So let's go ahead and see what we need. We need a simple machine chassis with the soul attuned blend. So let's get a simple machine chassis. I did make several of these. Uh, let's go ahead and do three of them for right now. And if I just use an induction smelter, I can get that kicked off. Uh, what I'm going to do is let's just get rid of that for right now and put these over here so that I can get this made up just a little bit more quickly. While I'm at it, let's go ahead and disable the auto output so that I can grab this first one and then be on my way. Whoops, got clipped into the door, the door there. So um, now that I have this soul machine chassis, I should be one step closer to making the powered spawner. Now there's going to be some other stuff I need to do. I need to make electrical steel here. So I need steel and silicon. I'm not sure. Do I have any silicon with me? Um, I do not. Okay, so why is... Okay, I really thought there was different uh, flavors of silicon see if I can okay so yeah there is so let's try to use that so uh, the I think crushed quartz will be my best bet if I furnish this up I should get silicon so let's do that real fast uh, let's split this up and once again let's uh, disable this auto output real fast so that I can grab just a little bit of this then I can re-enable that and come back over here Okay, so I was looking for electrical steel, so I actually need just a little bit more. Um, and I really hope I can use this version of silicon because it's not showing up that I can. In the other... Okay, I might have to use an alloy smelter or my simple alloy smelter, but that's not a problem. So let's, let's grab the steel. If I can use the induction furnace, it, I believe it, sh it would be faster. But if I can't, I can use my alloy, the simple alloy smelter, smelter in the basement. Okay, so yeah, I can't even put that in there. So that's unfortunate, but it's not... Uh, okay, so um, can I not do that? Really? 
Wait a second. Okay, so I'm now confused. Oh, I need coal. Okay, so this is... Okay, I got it. I'm confused because there are different recipes. The recipe I was looking at earlier was steel and silicon, but this recipe is actually iron ingots, coal, and silicon. So I can't use that steel. I just need iron. So that's not a problem. And then I need the pulverized coal as well. So let's get rid of that. And I keep wanting to put in cola. It's like I'm thirsty or something. I don't know. Anyways, let's see if this will work. Fantastic. So I need a little bit of this. I need four of them. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can do while I am waiting on that. I don't really think there is. I will need to make some of these vibrant crystals. And I'm going to need some vibrant alloy. And I'm going to need my alloy smelter again, it looks like. Okay, so redstone, gold, glowstone. Redstone. Gold and glowstone. I should honestly have this recipe memorized. I've done it, pl I made it plenty. Okay, so. Yeah, that's gonna take quite a while, it looks like. So, what I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna go ahead and make this electrical steel off camera, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the. Um, energized uh, alloy I think it's called um, let me yes energetic alloy ingots I'm gonna make those and the recipe is just this in an alloy smelter and once I have that done I will be right back so I don't have all of the alloy that I need right now but I can get started on something else with what I have so there's a machine I'm actually going to need to make that I have not made yet it is an ender IO machine um, to get this Z-Logic controller, I need to make a slice and spice, and the slice and spice is made with this recipe right here. So what I need to do is I need to make this energized bimetal gear, and uh, first off, I need to make these nuggets out of the energetic alloy that I do have. So let's do that, and then I can go ahead and I'm not sure if I have infinity bimetal gears or not. Apparently, I don't. That's not hopefully a problem. Um, iron nuggets. Okay, so that looks pretty cheap to be honest. So let's make two of those and then I should be able to make the gears. And let's throw those in there and let's grab the gears. So that's fantastic. And then I think I have everything I need. Think, think, think. Okay, so do I have any of the more of the soul machine chassis? I, I should have. Yes, two more. Okay, so let's dump this in here and then let's make that slice and spice. And then might as well get that going as well because there's a recipe I need to use it for, obviously. So let's see. Um, okay, so I need. Wait a second. Oh, 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 I see. That's my bad. There we go. So there's the slice and spice. And for this, I need to make a Z Logic controller, which is this right here. I need solarium. So let's grab that, um, a zombie head. I have plenty of those, thankfully. Uh, I only need one of those. I need some silicon, I believe two, and then redstone. So that's the recipe for a Z-Logic controller. And I believe I have the energy ran underneath. Yes, I do. Okay, so I need some flux duct as well. Because this is a machine I am going to keep here, uh, I'm going to permanently put it here. Let's go ahead and pop that down. I do need a capacitor. I have plenty of capacitors. They are capacitors that I found. Let's find enhanced hungry wonder capacitor. Sure, sounds great. Let's throw that in there. It is using 358 RF per tick or uh, micro infinities, I think is uh, their unit of energy. I do need an axe and shears. I forgot about that. So let's get, I do have an axe and I should have shears. Uh, and that should be fine. And then that should get going. And looks like that's gonna go awfully quick. So there's my Z logic controller. Uh, in the future, I can auto output to the top and extend my item duct. I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't really need it. Uh, 
So let's grab this stuff. And then I do need to go ahead and add Ender Pearls to uh, this energetic alloy to make it into vibrant alloy. So let's do that. That should get crafting up. And that'll take a little while. Let's see if there's anything else I can do for the powered spawner. And I just heard my locomotive go past, so that's cool. So I can make the, I can't make these yet, duh. That's what I'm waiting on. So I have everything except that. So looks like I'm just going to have to wait on these. So once I get some vibrant alloy and I only need two ingots, I will be right back. So I have my vibrant alloy, so let's go ahead and get it uh, knocked down to these vibrant alloy nuggets. Might as well go ahead and put that in a pattern as well. And then I should be just about there. I need to take an emerald and I need to take these uh, nuggets here and just surround them so that I can make these vibrant crystals. And I need two of these to make the powered spawner. And I think that's all. So let's see if I can't make a powered spawner. So that is fantastic. I have a powered spawner now. Uh, the thing is, I actually need to set this powered spawner to spawn something, and right now I don't have anything. So what I need to do is I need to grab a spawner, which I don't have. Uh, I know where I can get one, though. So uh, let me go on a quick adventure. And yes. So if I go this way, um, there's a chest up above, and I need to watch carefully for it. But the chest leads to a room, and I think the room has a spawner. And I need to capture that spawner. And it will actually become a broken spawner, but that's not a big deal. Uh, that's exactly what I need for what I'm doing. So, uh, haven't seen it yet. I know it's up here somewhere. I'll see just a chest poking through. And that is the edge of the room I'm looking for. Is that it? No, it's not. There it is. I see it. Okay, so we're just going to bail. And then we can pop up through here. And we can grab this spawner. And as you can see in the past, I lit up this room. Uh, so that there wouldn't be mobs in it. And there are mobs anyways. So that's cool. But uh, I did need that spawner. I have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back to my base. And when I'm there, I will be back. So I'm back at my main base, I have my powered spawner and my broken spawner. What I need to make next is a soul binder. So let's take a look at the recipe for that. The soul binder is another machine from the mod Ender.io. And I think I have everything I need for that. So let's go ahead and set the pattern. It involves a lot of heads and skulls and some solarium, as well as a soul machine chassis. So when I made three of those chassis earlier, I, I kind of knew what I was doing because I've done this uh, many times before. So let's set up this soul binder. I do have an area ready for this over here in my workshop and it'll go right next to the slice and spice. I can also set this up to auto output to the top and let's get a capacitor for that thing. So, uh, premium smelting wonder capacitor, enhanced hungry. Okay, so let's use that. That doesn't seem to be super valuable. What I need next is to get a soul vial with a mob in it. So let's do that. Let's make a soul vial. And I believe it should be fairly easy to make a soul vial. Uh, soul vial is a method to capture a mob. So I need fused quartz, and I don't have any fused quartz, to be honest. Can I use anything else? I cannot use hardened glass. Okay, so I'm going to need to get some, some of the fused quartz, and that is made just with nether quartz and alloy smelter. So that is not a problem. It's not really a big deal at all. So let's go down here. Let's go down to this beautiful symbol alloy smelter and grab um, I guess throw in the nether quartz in there and also the simple alloy sm smelter up here is uh, still going on the energetic alloy uh, this is going to take quite a while so there's other things I can do uh, let's go ahead and do some of those things so this is my building I'm going to be setting up my mob spawner in so uh, let's take a look at what I've done so far um, and how this thing is going to function. I guess I'm not going to give too much away, but uh, for right now, I should be able to put up to four different spawners right here. For right now, I'm just going to use one to spawn creepers, and I don't know if I've said that this episode, but the whole reason for me making this building is to kill creepers, 
And that is because um, if we look at the creeper, what creepers give off, and apparently I can't do that. Um, there's a creeper drop, and I can't remember what it's called. So let me look up gunpowder because uh, creeper. Okay, the catalyzing gland. And the catalyzing gland can be used to actually make gas tears in this recipe right here. I could actually just spawn gas, but that's no fun. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is spawning creepers, and I'm going to be killing them in this building. But I feel like I'm going to be using a cool little way to kill or uh, yeah, kill the mobs. I'm going to be using some rails. So let's dive into that real fast. What I'm going to need is I'm going to need some standard hulls. So let's make some of those. Um, for right now, let's do... I'm just going to do five. Um, I'm going to make ten because I will use them in the future. But for right now, I'm just going to set up five of these carts. And then I need to make a cage from the Mod Steve's carts, obviously, because that's where the hole is from. Uh, the cage is pretty simple here. I just need some fence and a simple PCB. Let's grab some patterns. I think I have some more. And oak fence, that is good by me. And I do want to make several of these fences or these cages. Obviously, and I'll make five of them. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's go down here to where I have my cart assembler. And what I'm going to be doing is making a... I'm going to be making some carts like this. It's just a cage cart. Uh, what these carts can do is they can capture mobs inside the cart and haul them along. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hauling them to their death. So in addition to that, I'm going to need a locomotive to pull all of these carts. So I'm going to grab an electric locomotive along with some electric track and some of the flux uh, transformers here. And I need eight of these. I should be able to make those, so that's not a problem. Uh, this first cage cart should be done, so there we go. And I do need to make uh, several more of them. There are the flux transformers. Well, luckily, these carts are made rather quickly. I think it's like 30-something seconds. So that is not really a big deal. So what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of the cage carts. And once I have all of them done, I will be right back. So I have all of my cage carts done as well as I have the things I need for the soul vial. So let's go ahead and make that. And because it's night, I need to hunt for a creeper real fast. So the soul vial is pretty simple. It's just fused quartz with solarium at the top. Let's go ahead and set the recipe as well. And let's go find a creeper. I just need one of them, and I need to capture it by right-clicking on it with the soul vial. So that's just what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's nothing over there. There's a bunch of zombies over here. I see creepers. I see a closer creeper. So this is the creeper that's going to be father of all creepers. Oh, cool. I heard my locomotive again. So he's still circuiting, so that's good. Okay, so I have my soul vial. I have a broken spawner, and now I'm going to combine, combine them rather in the soul binder. So let's go ahead and throw the soul vial in here, and let's throw in the um, the broken spawner there. And I need eight levels. I have eight levels, so that's fantastic. And then we can hit that and get that going. So the thing is, it looks like I'm struggling for power uh, for some reason. Um, I think maybe when I was doing some plumbing, I messed things up. So let's grab some flux duct and as well as my wrench here. Okay, so I don't know why it's not getting power, but it's not. Okay, so... Okay, so at the top, that should be fine. That's a facade, but that, uh, yeah, um, I'm not really sure why that's not getting power. Maybe if I do that, it'll, it'll get power. Yes, it is. Okay, so there was just something wacky going on with that. But it looks like this thing is going again. And let's go ahead and cover this back up, and then let's move on. While that is going, I can go ahead and do some other stuff, including setting up my spawner area. So let's get away from that. Okay, so 
how I'm going to actually be killing the mobs is with some spikes. So let's look at the spikes here. Uh, I'm going to use diamond spikes because mobs drop player kill only items if you use diamond spikes. So obviously that is really nice. Uh, let's see the recipe. It involves iron sword or uh, diamond sword rather. So let's go ahead and get those. Um, let's see if I have the diamond blocks automated. I do. So where'd the spikes go? Okay, let's just throw this in here and then uh, see if I can't make those spikes. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, it's just diamonds. It's not a problem. Okay, so diamond spikes are made like that and they do damage to mobs basically that touch them. So let's grab some of these. Let's let's do 20 for right now. I think that'll be enough. And let's go ahead and set these up. So what I'm going to do, and actually I can set up some of my, of my track as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a train running in here. And the train is going to be a, a death machine, essentially. So I think this first spawner can go right here. Let's just dig that out. Uh, I don't have it ready to place down yet. But in here, I'm going to have some tracks. So right here, let's just place some spikes. And if I run into them, I will get hurt as well as the mobs. So this is just going to be like the death area. Um, and I have this glass here so that you can see all the death happening because why not? And so what we're going to do is I'm going to run this electrical track around. Uh, so basically the cage carts are going to be taking the mobs uh, through the spikes and there will be nothing that the mobs could do. Uh, they're just going to have to sit there and get spiked. So I think I'm going to have the track run kind of, it's going to zigzag through here. So let's see where can, okay. So if I do this, actually I need to have it do a circuit. And I think it might be better if I don't do it quite, you know what? That'll work. It'll work if I do something like this. The cages don't have a super big range in which they can grab things from, but they do have some range. And so we're going to kind of count on that to allow the cages to grab the mobs as I need. Okay, so th yeah, this will work fine. Uh, there will be some area up at the front that's not really covered, but I don't think that will be really be a problem. Actually, what I can do is I can put more spikes down right here so that the mobs can't even really be up here. So let's see. Let's grab a few more spikes here. I don't need very many. I think four is enough. Yes, it is. And there we go. So let's lay down the rest of this track, which is just two blocks. Okay, so let's set up the locomotive. Uh, the locomotive will be here. And actually, that's fine. And it'll just pull the cages behind it. And I do need a crowbar to hook these up. That's not a problem. Oh, whoops. Okay, so that should all be hooked up. It currently doesn't have power, obviously, because it is not hooked up to a flex transformer, but we can fix that. Um, Let's do the flex transformer. I'm going to try to put it right here. I'm not 100% sure if I can put it underneath, but I'm going to try. So we're just going to set it up like this. And then I need to put the track back on top of it. And then I actually need to get it some power. So for that, I can just punch through this wall here and Let's run some better flux duct than that. Let's get the best flux duct I have right now, which is the redstone energy flux duct. Let's run it like this. Also, because I'm slightly OCD, let's uh, only have one connection there. And then we can punch out this wall and then we should be able to hook up through here to my main power source. Okay, so that should, we should be getting some power in here. Let's see if the locomotive indeed has power. It does, fantastic. Okay, so let's make sure that this is all hooked up. It looks good. So let's uh, stop this thing real fast. 
let's let's slow it down a little bit because I think the speed is having a high rate of speed will actually be um, not ideal because I want the mobs to be killed each and every time it goes through here rather than taking two or three passes to kill the mobs. And I think by having it go slower, it will actually be more effective at killing the mobs. So that's the goal anyways. So let's uh, have it be set right here. These are already set up to um, auto pick up mobs. So that's fantastic. Uh, let's grab some, what I'm gonna do real fast is I'm gonna grab some stone and I'm gonna clean some stuff up real fast. And once I have that done, I will be right back. So my soul vial and my broken spawner are done, and so I have a creeper broken spawner now, and what I need to do is I need to grab an anvil, and I don't have the automated yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And that will allow me to combine the powered spawner with the broken spawner. So the anvil is made pretty easily. Uh, looks like I don't have iron blocks automated somehow. So let's do that. And now I have an anvil. And I do need some levels to do this, but thankfully I am level 45, so this shouldn't be a problem. I want to say it'll take like 8 or so levels to do this. Let's place this down. Uh, 16, so whatever. Um, the cost multiplier on the creeper is 1.5, so that might be a little spicy. I'm definitely going to have to use a regular capacitor and nothing fancy. So let's, uh, let's grab a basic capacitor and... Okay, so let's roll on over to my spawning area, and let's set this up. Okay, so let's go in through here. The spawner can go right here, and I do need to grab some flux duct because I got rid of it to actually hook it up with power. But for right now, let's... Why did I get rid of my capacitor? My goodness. Capacitor goes in here. Uh, okay, so this thing will take 240 micro infinities per tick. That's not bad at all. Uh, that is not bad at all. Actually, let's look at some of the other capacitors. Simple, sm nope. Premium Okay, so this says enhanced a lot. I know the words actually mean things. So let's grab that. Um, cool, 1,700. And we don't have to run this thing all the time. But... We can. <laughs> At that rate, actually, I should be able to run it all the time, uh, or almost all the time. I'm not 100% sure. Let's just run this right here. Um, once again, because my OCD is kicking in, let's get rid of that. And it is spawning creepers. I did not mean it for it to be active just quite yet. Okay, so as you can see, they are caged, um, which is actually exactly what I want to see, so that's cool. Uh, before I actually get this thing running though, I want to grab some vacuumulators, and I do have them ob automated already. So let's grab a couple of them, and let's take a look at the recipe. Iron gear, redstone servo, that's all pretty basic. Uh, hopper, that's pretty basic. The device frame is kind of like the machine frame, except you have a copper gear and tin ingots rather than a tin gear and iron ingots, but it's uh, the same basic shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a few of these. And then I'm also going to grab some item duct uh, after these are done. So let's grab some item duct. And then let's grab some form of storage. Let's grab modular storage if I have it. You know what? I have one of the units over here. So let's grab one of those. Uh, they're just sitting around doing nothing. So I might as well use it. Um, let's use the, the cheaper one. And then I also want to grab an import bus and some flux cable and I don't have that automated how do I not have that automated so let's automate that because that is definitely something I will be needing a lot of in this series or at least some and that should be enough there there we go okay so I should have just about everything I need to get this thing up and running Okay, so in here I'm going to have some vacuumulators, and I'm actually thinking about doing it under the track. And actually, let's grab one more. Um, once again, because my OCD. Uh, things won't be centered if I have three of them, but if I have four, I can do. I can center them. Okay, so what I'm going to... Oh, shoot. It will be better if I do it from above, because I'm not... I won't be sure where I am standing. Okay, so let's put a vacuumulator here. Actually, I can do it from underneath now. I know what row it is. Okay, so uh, punch this out. This will be vacuumulator. 
and then um, let's do here and actually that won't work super well let's do here and then okay so that's inside and this will be here okay so let's put this last vacuum later here and then we'll need to grab some of the track that fell and replace that on top of the vacuumulators. Basically what vacuumulators do is they take items, they are able to suck them up um, from the overworld and put them in their inventory. Okay, so that is fantastic. That should work. And then what I need to do with the vacuumulators is I need to set them up to be output on the bottom. And then I need to hook them up to flux duct, or not flux duct, but uh, item duct, my bad. And we can just, oh shoot, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's okay though. I'm kind of making a mess. So what should happen is because these uh, vacuum leaders can auto output items, all the items will flow to a specific source and that source uh, will be let's say right here so let's put that there all the items should flow into this and then we can just import the items from that like so oh that was not what i wanted to do so if i just run this down and over actually no i don't even have to do that i can hook it up over here And that is a shovel. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna worry about making that look pretty right now. That should work. Okay, so what I wanna do is let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Okay, I really didn't think that would ha No. Okay. Okay. Things were learned. I need my crowbar back. That's okay though. Okay, so let's place this down. Let's place this here. And let's reattach these and then get this going. Obviously, it'll be better ha to have this thing going before we actually... Okay, so there we go. That's going. Uh, and then I just need to turn the spawner on from down here. Let's do that. Um, and then let's hop up above and see if this is going to work. Okay, so I do need to make sure not to get run over. Okay, so it'd be better if I had like a platform. There we go. So what it should do is it should grab the creepers as it passes. And honestly, I, I should probably have more cage carts. And that's something I can do in the future, but it's not a super big deal. Also, the locomotive will damage the creepers as well. So what's going to happen is it's just going to run these creepers through the spikes here and it's going to kill them like so. So that's pretty fantastic. It looks like that's going to work out just perfectly. Um, and also, like I said, the locomotive can kill the creepers itself. Uh, let's We are getting some stuff and the import bus is working. So I'm going to go ahead and call this a good build. So uh, that's a pretty good wrapping up point. I accomplished what I wanted. Uh, so in today's episode, I built all the things I need for my little spawning mechanism here. And uh, this will basically just kill creepers. And that's pretty fantastic. And because I am using these diamond spikes to kill the creepers, I will get player only mob drops. So that's pretty fantastic. So anyways, if you liked today's episode, definitely give it a like. If you enjoy watching automation type stuff in modern Minecraft, like this right here, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 8 and I will see you next time.